we've been working on ML and AI, as I said, for a number of years. It's, it's live in the field with customers for several years. Um, and I think things like, you know, Macro Advisor jump out to me as being a really good example about how it can change customers' workflows. So Macro Advisor is a capability we released and we've, we've been continuing to update over, the, over a couple of releases. But um, Macro Advisor basically watches you as you work in your CAD workflow and um, watches the things that you're doing. And if it sees you doing things, um, it will offer you up recommendations in, in terms of macros. So it'll send you a little notification to say that we've, got, we've created a macro for you. You can click on that. We find that the majority of customers really like that, that they do want to click on that. Um, and, we'll, and we'll show them we've created a macro. We've seen you do these eight things in a row. So you drew a circle, you drew a line, you copied it, you pasted it, then you moved it down here. We've watched you do that, so we've created a macro for you on that. Would you like to save that macro to your own personalized macro overview? So what we're able to do with that ML um, capability is, is offer up personalized insights for users. So that's the real paradigm shift here when I say that for the longest time we worked on automation, this is personalized, this is like Eric, what are the things we can offer up you that make you better at your specific CAD workflow? And those are the kind of things that we're investing in at the moment. So they're different than LLMs. We're doing that as well. But this is true, um, you know, machine, other um, ML algorithms as well. And it, it's such an interesting and unique opportunity because we're really helping the way folks work right now. And as our labor challenges continue and the shortage of availability in folks that have these technical backgrounds, if now John can do his process in 20 minutes instead of 40 minutes because you've had this tool that helps augment that, that's a huge shift. And, and I'm also excited to hear that folks are excited about it because yeah. the first thing, and you're going to hate this, and I'm sorry, but the first thing that comes to mind is, do you remember Clippy? Clippy, 100%. Clippy. It that makes was, you just like, That oh. was the bar for us. We're like, no Clippy. <laughs> Let's not do Clippy. Although Clippy's coming back, right? Clippy's coming back. It but is. Apparently, Clippy's, I, Clippy's I on the I don't know back. if I'm excited about yeah. that, but we'll see. <laughs> it'll, it'll really depend on the iteration. But, yeah. you know, it's, it's cool because you see those old tools like Clippy and everybody's like, we hate this. Yeah. Get this away. Yeah. But I think the change is just that personalization, as you alluded sure. to. It's this is for me learning from me gives me a clear right. output of how I can do my work better, not yeah. just, did you want to write a cover letter? It's like, no, I, I never wanted no, to write a cover stop. letter. Please stop asking me that. <laughs> not especially when you're asking me to write a cover letter. So get out of here, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, I think, you know, I mean, and that's credit to our experienced design team as well, but, but like being able to offer up the right information at the right time in the right context is key here, right? You can have the best algorithms in the world, but if you're not offering it up in the right context and you're not interrupting workflows, I think that's the key to it. And that's I, the big interruption. Like being interrupted, as I just did to you, sorry, <laughs> no, it's good. Is, is tough because, you know, we're, we're in this weird state where we're working now, where we have Slack, we have all these tools, yeah. and there's this constant noise going on. Right. And to be able to have a tool that is maybe, you know, innovative in its thing, but not disruptive in your workflow, I think is also really important right, as well. Right. I've had to train myself to block off focus time in yeah, my day yeah. where I just go Slack is turned off. These things are turned off so I can get my work done. Yeah. Which I'm sorry, we're deviating from our focus here too. But <laughs> there's just so many ways that we can just really build on how we're getting work done. And so it just sounds like a, a really cool and, process. you know, it's about building trust. Like I think, you know, you're, you're talking about manually turning off and creating focus time for you. I think the ultimate goal here though with, with ML algorithms and AI is that it is a true partner that knows you well and knows that Eric is in productivity mode right now and like the things, you know, surfacing the right information to you at the right time. So, you know, you trust it more over time that actually you don't even need to turn those things off because your AIs are taking care of you. Right? And, and there's such an education component to that too. Sure. So people don't feel freaked out about it. Sure. It's like, we, we have your privacy in mind. We yeah. have, you know, your data is secure and safe. Yeah. You've, you've educated everybody to understand the value of the tool That's and right. the way it impacts everything. And That's that narrative right. changes now because you go, okay, like I, I feel safe and secure doing this and it's helping versus why are you watching me right now? I That's feel right. That's right. I think an, an interesting, another, another big shift that happened was, you know, if we were having this podcast five years ago at AU, the majority of our customers would have said to us that they don't want to put their data in the cloud. You know, it's in really important IP to them, uh, their DWG files or, or what, you know, RVT files or, or, or whatever they feel uh, where they want to store their IP. They wanted to have it locked down on their local servers. And I think the massive shift there in terms of it, I mean, full cloud adoption, full realizing the benefit of, hey, my Oh, not only the, the the data that I'm currently working on in front of me is valuable in terms of um, in, in terms of for them to be able to work more efficiently, the whole back category of stuff that I've done, all of my existing DWGs, all of my existing data, I want to be able, you know, by leveraging cloud, I want to be able to 
take advantage of that data so that the AI knows me even better and, and that we can we can do even more things. So we're we're seeing that massive change. And yeah. that's that's a beauty moment because we get to really see the the shift in that trust in that sure. education moment because folks say, okay, now I know that you have my best interests at heart. Yeah. Regardless of what platform or tool or company yeah. or industry and in it, there's a big shift there. Yeah. And so we're we're able to sit back and step back and go, okay, like my cloud my data's in the cloud. It's safe. Yeah. It's also helping me make better cho choices and yes. better decisions yeah. in a way that I wasn't empowered to do before. Yeah. And it's we're just going to keep building on. Yeah. It's a really exciting moment, regardless yeah. of what tech you're using. That's right. And we and you know we're really really careful about the data that we use to train ML algorithms. We all you know we you know I mean trust is at the absolute forefront of everything we do. We will never do anything that would ever that would ever you know breach that trust. Yeah, and, it, yeah. and it's it's paramount in the construction industry, yeah. both just from the of buildings course. we're building and everything yeah. else. And so it's it's super encouraging to hear that that is always that focus. Yeah.